Hello everyone, this is DA from E Academy and in the previous video we have talked about how we can derive a shape function in the finite element method and we took the linear element, the two nodes per element and we derive a specific shape function in that case. And before going to the third step of the finite element method, let's talk about what would be the case if there is not a linear element, there is some quadratic or cubic or some high degree element and how we can derive such type of shape function in that case. And the second thing that is very important before going to the next step is talk about the global node numbering and the local node numbering and relating that thing with the local and the global coordinate system. So let's start. So that was the first case that we have talked about that this is an eighth element the linear element having two nodes the first one is represented by x a and the second and or the second node that is in the local node is represented by x b so how we can find the length of the element we know the formula that we have discussed in the previous video that we will subtracting x b minus x a in order to get the length of the element and due to the interpolating nature of the shape function, it will be the maximum position at the first one because this is psi1, the eth uh, shape function, because this is an eth element. So psi1 of that xa would be 1 at the node xa. And it will be 0 when it's on the other end. And the same case for the psi2. It's 1, the maximum position at xb, and it then decrease its value uh, when uh, it reaches xa because it is zero in that case. So we can also say that that the shape function interpolates or changes the values of u because uh, we know the shape function that is equal to u. We know the general displacement u1 psi1 plus u2 psi2 that is at the element level. So the shape function interpolates or changes the values of u by traveling from one end to another end. So for example, psi1 is changing from u1 to u2 and uh, vice versa. So now let's suppose we're in the two dimension. We have an element that has three nodes. So this is the first node, second node, or the third node. Uh, let's suppose this is the first node, one, two and three. So there are three nodes, which implies that there will be three shape functions. Psi one for this will be at one at x a. Let's suppose this is x is equal to x a. And uh, this is because this is in two dimension. We can't say that uh, this is x is equal to x a because there should be some y value as well. So we will saying it one, two and three coordinate system in a x y coordinate system so this eighth element the psi one at one will be one and at two and three will be equal to zero this is one at two and the one at three is equal to zero and psi two at two will be one and psi two at three and one will be zero and psi three at three will be one and one and two will be zero because this is the interpolating nature of the shape function so generally we can say that that the shape function is at the jth node is one and when the shape function is not at the jth node is equal to zero so again in the one dimension when we have two nodes per element, we have two shape functions. In the two dimension, when we have three nodes per element, we have three shape functions. And so does it increases as the number of nodes increase. In the upper case, the shape function tends to increase as well. So because we have done the derivation of the element level equation in the local uh, coordinate system, uh, the assembly will obviously will be in the global coordinate system because we have to assemble the local parts in order to get the global image. 
Now, there should be some difference uh, of the notation when we're talking about a local node numbering or the global coordinate system in order to dif differentiate how the equation is behaving in the local coordinate system and in the global coordinate system. In the local coordinate system, we will represent the coordinate by x bar instead of x in order to differentiate between the global coordinate system coordinate expression. Uh, so that will be the equation in the local coordinate system from this onwards. And why there is a need for the local coordinate system when we have a global coordinate system or when we can talk about the whole uh, body or the whole, for example, this is the geometry of a body. So why there is a need to talk about the local coordinate system? The idea is same because we can divide the whole geometry into different mesh according to our ease. So for example, this this is the first element and in order to find the equation of this element, we have to talk about, uh, we have to look at this element in the local coordinate system. So by this, this is this would be very easy to talk about this object in a local coordinate system instead of the, instead of the global coordinate system because when we're talking about this uh, piece of an element in the local coordinate system we don't have to worry about what its relation with this part in the global coordinate system because eventually by uh, talking about all of these elements in the local coordinate system we will in the end assemble them and then take back to the global coordinate system so let's take the one dimension element that have two nodes because we are in the local coordinate system x bar is equal to zero here and x bar is equal to some point for example um, let's say x is equal to x uh, b let's suppose so this is zero and x bar is equal to x a uh, x b why i haven't chose x is equal to x a here because of the complexity, because initially uh, we have been uh, assigning this end as x is equal to a and this end as x is equal to b. So that is why it would be very intuitive because uh, x a is now is equal to 0 and x b is x b itself. So here x bar is equal to 0 in the local coordinate system because, for example, this is the coordinate system we have. This is the 0. This is some other end that is x b. We have the length x b minus x a so x b minus x a that is zero so the length is x b in the local coordinate system of the cth element so that's the point of view from the local coordinate system and that is the point of view from the global coordinate system because this is specified this is some this is some value x a and this has some value x b itself this is not zero because when we have an uh, we have a personalized coordinate system this end or this end would be zero so this end is equal to zero in our local coordinate system and this will be in the global coordinate system now so now we make a table to see which thing is what in the local coordinate system if we are moving from this to this or from local coordinate system to the global coordinate system which things we will be changing in the equation in the global coordinate system, the independent variable x is represented by x itself. But in the local coordinate system, the independent variable is represented by x bar. In the global coordinate system, the first node of any element or the eth element is generally represented by x with the subscript a. And in the local coordinate system, the first node of the eth element is represented by 0. In the global coordinate system, the other end or the second end in the one dimension because this table is in the one dimension only and you can change it uh, according to the dimension changes. So the other end of the eth element in the global coordinate system is represented by xb, so does in the local coordinate system. And when we're talking about how we can find the length of an element, so the same, the length will be exactly same because he is equal to xb minus xa the formula is same but due to xa is equal to zero it is still xb minus xa in the global coordinate system but in the local coordinate system it is actually 
x b so now we have seen which things which notations have been changed when there is a difference in the coordinate system from global to local and now we will apply these things uh, to the specified shape function that we have derived in the previous video so i am going to write the shape function that we have derived in the previous video for a one dimension element so that was the shape functions that we have derived and that was in the global coordinate system and we have to transform these shape function into the local coordinate system so now let's write it out this shape function the first element uh, the shape function on the first node will be xb is actually the h the uh, length of per element minus because x is going to be replaced by x bar xb is again h at the eth uh, level and xa is equal to zero so this would be the first shape function the node uh, shape function the first node will be this and if we're going to look at the second shape function or the shape function of the second node this will be equal to because x is going to be replaced by x bar x a is equal to zero x b is the length of an element in x a is equal to zero so this is x bar by h and this is h minus x bar over h so these two and okay there is a need to see our light x bar here so these shape function this shape function is at x bar local coordinate system and this shape these two shape functions are at x is equal to uh, x at some value x so this is the difference uh, when we have shape function in the local coordinate system and when we have shape function in the global coordinate system and plug these two shape functions that are in the local coordinate system into our approximated uh, definition of u that is u is equal to um, u1 psi 1 plus u2 psi 2 again i'm dealing it in the one dimension only so this is the element level equation so you have to plug this thing here and this thing here in order to get uh, the primary variable in the local coordinate system as well so this thing was very important to look at the local node number and the global node numbers because in the upcoming methods we will be dealing with uh, these things seen that what is the difference between the global and the local coordinate system and what would be the case when we are in the one dimension or the two dimension or in the higher dimension in the next video we, we will be deriving the shape function for a quadratic element so we will not be in the linear uh, we will not be just discussing the linear element but we will be discussing the quadratic element to see which things have to be changed in the shape function when this uh, in the quadratic when we are driving it for the quadratic element so this is for now we're looking for more such videos then you can subscribe this channel or to watch more upcoming videos we will meet in the next video till then take care goodbye